Hello everyone who's joined us in Zoom. I am just getting the live stream set up and we will get going soon. Taking a second. Excellent. So I think we're live. So hi, everybody. Um, thanks and welcome for uh, thanks for joining us uh, to today's professional beauty webinar, which is 10 steps for building a successful waxing business. And um, I'm Eve Oxbury. I'm head of editorial at Professional Beauty. And today I have with me Marta Zakowska, who is the owner of the Waxing Specialist Salon and the Waxing Specialist Academy in London. So hi, Marta. Thanks for joining. Good morning. Hello, everyone. So yeah, um, Marta is going to be giving us a presentation very soon on 10 steps for building a successful waxing business. Um, if you do have any questions as you're watching, um, if you're watching in Zoom, then just type them into the comments here. Um, and also if you're watching over on Facebook, just type them into the comments and we will definitely get onto those towards the end and get them answered live for you. So yeah, I'm going to um, hand over now to Marta to get started. <laughs> thank you so much um hello everyone um thank you for joining in this morning we have monday i'm not sure if uh you know how is the weather where you are we have a bit of a sunshine in london which is a great and is a, is a great opportunity to connect with you all and i would like to welcome you today at the webinar called the 10 steps for building successful waxing business i'm just going to share my screen with you Fab, I will turn off my uh, video and microphone now while you do that, Marta, and I will pop back in at the end for questions. No problem. Okay. Let's see if I have you all here. Perfect. Okay. So, 10 steps for building a successful waxing business by Marta Zaczkowska. Before we start, I would like to uh, tell you a bit about myself um, for those who um, maybe see me for the first time. So, my name is Marta Zaczkowska and uh, I have over 15 years combined experience in specializing in intimate hair removal in Poland and in UK, which includes waxing, IPL and laser. I'm a director of the Waxing Specialist Salon here in London, and also a director and educator at Waxing Specialist Academy. Uh, I'm also director at Marta Zaczkowska Consultancy, and I specialize in intimate and pregnancy waxing. Some of you may know me from a previous professional uh, beauty webinar about pregnancy waxing. Uh, I'm a creator of a first pregnancy intimate wax course here in UK and a founder of the new Waxing Audit. I'm a speaker and I regularly contribute for trade and press articles. And I would like to add it, I absolutely love waxing and waxing is my absolute passion. Okay, so now you know me a bit, let's move to our webinar. Right, what, what will I cover today during this webinar? I'll be talking about choosing the wax brand, about recruiting the dream team, pricing your services, database, filling the appointment columns, the waxing specialist 70-30 rule, cancellation and no-show policies, systems and blueprints, online presence, and investing in training. Who? quite a lot, right? Well, some of you might be already running a waxing businesses, and some of you might be maybe at the beginning of this journey. So wherever you're at, I think all these things listed here are very crucial for you on the way to success. Okay, well, we're going to talk about success today. So I would like to uh, start with this quote by Walt Disney. 
do what you do so well that they will want to see it again and bring their friends. Okay, so perhaps you are very great at waxing already, but is this enough to build successful waxing business? Well, I hope during this presentation today, I will be able to give you some ideas and make you get excited about building your waxing empire. So let's crack on. Number one, choosing the wax brand. Well, guys, well, it's really, really important, the wax I, that you're choosing, the brand of wax that will be the best for your clients and for you to work with. And you really need to fall in love with your products. There's no other way. By working with a brand that you love, you are also showing your clients that you really care about them and you want to give them the best. Remember, always choose quality over price. And low cost products, unfortunately, will never deliver high end results. My advice as well is to go for introductionary trainings with brands, go to Exo exhibition, go and talk to uh, brands, different brands of wax, try it, buy some samples, and make your decision based on how do you feel about this brand? Do you believe it 100%? And will you be able to share that love with your clients? Number two, recruiting the dream team. Well, wouldn't it be amazing if every time you put advertising online, the dream candidate like knocks your door? Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. So if you are looking for the dream team and you're gonna really need them to build a successful business, I would say look for two core characteristics, passion and positive attitude towards work. Have a bespoke interview questions. I love this, guys. In my salon, I've created five questions that really help me to choose the right candidate. Choose the questions that really fit to you. What I do also, I send them beforehand, before the interview. And then I check if they got prepared, how well they, they prepare the answers. And, and I can really by those questions tell if somebody is suitable for the job. Now, can they fit in within the existing team? Will the clients love them? And if you'll be able to manage them? Those three things are really important. And I have learned this over the years through, from my mentors. And I really like this. So you can use that method while looking for the dream candidate. Remember, you can teach them technical skills, but you can never teach them passion. Number three, pricing your services. I'm sorry to say, but cheap deals and low price attract cheap clients. You need to know your worth and charge accordingly. People will pay you what you ask for as long as you deliver. If you are an excellent waxer and you provide an excellent service, people will pay you the price, specifically when it comes to intimate wax. And remember, business is not a charity organization. You are in business to pursue a passion, to make money, to have more time for yourself and for your family, and to have a better quality of life. Number four, database. Wow, we just came out of lockdown and we all had a moment where we needed to contact our clients. And I'm sure most of you realize now that you need to have a database, emails of the clients so you can communicate them regardless of the situation. So create a database, take the clients, uh, the, take the details during your consultation, include information about medical histories, allergies, waxing preferences, and previous waxing experience. That's really important. Also create visiting notes about the treatment, the results and any skin reactions and the pain factor. Make additional notes about the work, hobbies, holiday plans, relationships and other details. And this will really, really help you to engage in conversation in the future and avoid asking the same question on every visit and make a habit of really updating those notes. This will also be helpful for other therapies in your salon 
if the client is roaming in your salon and is changing between the team. And it is really crucial to record this information in a database, uh, as some, well, most of insurance company will require this. <clears throat> and remember, GDPR law, you need to be compliant. Number five, that's super easy, right? We're already on number five. Invest in online booking system. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, I have went online bookings only about six years ago. And I don't have receptionist and I went full online bookings only. The, situ the current situation probably made you realize that that's something that you really need in your business. Online booking system is like customized 24 hours virtual receptionist because you have your appointments really filling up while you sleep. Remember to have a cancellation policy and no show policy and make those policy very clear to your clients. Have the booking system secure with credit card or debit card and make sure that the system is set up to send automated confirmations, reminders, no show follows up. Make sure your system also sends a client's um, a review request after each treatment, as this gives you a valuable feedback. I am absolute um, advocate for online system. I think it really works if you are a bit apprehensive or you need a bit of advice how to set it up, how to have a salon running without the receptionist with just online booking system. You can write it um, online booking system in the comments and I will get back to you uh, with any help if I can. Right, we have way through. That was really easy. The first step, I've prepared it uh, for you you know, very, very easy and smooth. Halfway, well done, stay with us because now we're gonna get a bit deeper. Number six, use the waxing specialist 70-30 rule. What is that 70-30 rule, percent, percentage rule? Well, spend most of the first appointment talking about the different waxing you use, the styles you offer and educate the client about in grow hair, when to come back to get regular waxing, no double dipping policy, retail, all the professional stuff. For the remaining 30% of the time you are with the client, try to find out as much as you can about them. For example, what industry they're working in and how they found about the salon. In the following appointments, always ask how was their skin after the first wax, how did they feel, um, how the hair grow back, and found out like how satisfied they were with the treatment. You want to concentrate your whole attention on the client and guys, please refrain from talking about yourself. I know we sometimes guilty of that <laughs> as a beauty therapist. We love to be with people, but that rules clearly said 70% professional, 30% private. So always keep the uh, conversation on the more professional side because that is the key to running a professional successful business. Number seven, have a clear cancellation and no-show policy. This is something that I would say most of salons struggling with. If you're just starting, this is probably your issue as well. Or even if you're running business for a long time, it's even harder to introduce it because you've had a client for some time and you've had, uh, they have their habits and it's really hard to change the habits of your clients. So one of the, most, the biggest struggles of a running profitable waxing business is dealing with no-shows, last minute cancellation. Having such a policy will make your life, your staff and clients life much easier. You don't want to be wasting money and time and getting frustrated. Implement a cancellation and no-show policy and stick with it. It is really important that clients respect your time and your business. And there are many options when creating your cancellation and no-show policy. For example, you can have 24 hours or 48 hours cancellation policy. You can charge 100% or 50% for no-shows. And remember to take a booking fee upfront. You should really choose what works for you and for your business. And it's really important to have this policy in place, otherwise it can really drag your business down. 
Well, in my salon, we have 24 hours cancellation policy. Clients have to reschedule or cancel 24 hours before online. We don't do it for them. Now, if they miss that time and they contact us, we always politely ask what was the reason of the cancellation of or the no show. And we listen to them. And we always give a one off an exception. So what we do, we say, we're really sorry you couldn't see us today. Uh, we are going to uh, take a 100% for the missed appointment, but we understand things get on your way and we give you a next treatment um, for free. So what we do, we take the money anyway, we tell them to book as soon as possible again online and when they come in next time, we don't charge them. And this is a one-off. So if you worry that you started to charge people and they get upset with you, have that one-off but explain the clients. Trust me, they will appreciate it. They will start to respect your business and they really think twice before they just having a cheeky cancellation because the sun is out or they wanted to go for shopping. Okay, also I wanted to say that when I first time introduced a cancellation policy, we used to lose 600 pounds a month from no-shows. After introducing that, it went down to 250 pounds with the difference that now I have the money in bank account. So I physically have those money. It makes my life so much easier. Staff know exactly what to do and clients are well behaved. Let's move to number eight. Number eight, systemize and create a blueprint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Guys, let's talk about McDonald's. Why McDonald's is so successful, okay? No matter where you go in the world, McDonald's burgers always look and taste the same because they are cooked in the same way, right? And McDonald's does this by having a clear step-by-step -step system to how, to, like how to make the burger that all the staff must follow. And to ensure quality and consistency, make sure that you have blueprints. And what are blueprints? Blueprints are written documents, manuals, videos, for your staff. This will be available for anyone also who will join in the future. This will also guarantee that your clients will receive and experience the same standard across all your services. There's no difference between Joanna, there's no difference between Amy or, or Jade or Gemma because they all work in according to your blueprints. So the service is always on the highest level. This gives also clarity to your staff and clients on how things are done in your salon. And it saves you time when training new staff. Every time somebody new joins in, you have a ready blueprint. You give them systems and they follow. Right, every single process that has to be made for your business to run has to be systemized, written and shared with your staff. And having system will make it easier in the future if you want to franchise or sell the business. You might not thinking about this yet, but you know, not only that the systemize and, and blueprints are helping you on every day, but they're securing your future. You can easily sell the business because it doesn't depend on you. All the system and blueprints are in place. Okay, number nine, online presence. Waxing is an intimate business and uh, it's really important that people know you. Everyone now is online, right? Even now, we're doing this webinar via internet. And I'm sure some of you have checked my profile or went to my uh, business page and see who is that girl, you know? What, yeah, what's her profile, what's her picture, what's her cover uh, photo on Facebook and so on. And I would say, if you want to run a successful business, you have to also be present online and invest in having social media presence. You have to create a content on Facebook and Instagram that shows your work, your salon, your team and your achievements. Don't be afraid to show what's going on behind the scenes. Don't be afraid to show your staff or yourself. Perhaps you're not so confident yet to be there, but try to with a small steps first twice a week, um, maybe once a week if, you, if you're just starting to introduce yourself to clients. 
And of course, you need to have a website. And guys, if you don't have a website those days, you really don't exist. And I would like to say this, there are a lot of courses now you can do, like how to run your Instagram, how to run your LinkedIn page, how to do online um, live videos on Facebook. You have a lot of opportunities now to get trained and, you know, up your game in the online world. And that comes with my second, my sorry, my last, my 10th step, invest in training. You want to be successful. That's the crucial part. No matter how good you are in waxing and how many years you've been in waxing and owning the business, you can never stop learning. Uh, as your waxing business grow, you will need to feel like many roles of a business that, that's required like new skills and extra knowledge. And some of those will include time management, human resources, management skills, assertiveness skills, team building, crisis management, God, there's so much. And many salon owners find staff management the hardest part in running business. My advice, guys, is don't wait until you struggle and start to learn now because time will be too late. Start to develop the skills from day one. And if you really can, consider working with mentor. This is, a, this is a very um, a crucial thing. I think if you want to grow, if you want to reach the next level with your business, because your business will be growing and you will need that extra skills. Okay, hope that's really clear. Now we have a bonus for those who listen those 10 steps. If you would like to get those slides, uh, which I've just presented to you, say in the comment, yes, 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 or one yes, <laughs> and I will send it to you. Yeah, so little bonus from me, right? To be successful, you need to remember that, well, it's good to look at around what other people do. And you might be looking at waxing specialists and seeing, oh, she's doing this, she's doing that. She's online bookings only. She has academy, you know, she's fully booked. She has amazing reviews. But my the biggest advice for you is be your own motivation look at yourself and try to do the best of your ability. You can take inspirations from others, but focus on your own growth. Thank you so much. That went really quick. I think quicker than I thought. <laughs> uh, and let's have some Q&A now. Oh, we have our lovely host back. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Fab, thanks so much, Marta. That was fantastic. Yeah, that did go quicker than I thought as well. When I saw oh, yes. <laughs> Tons of information there. I'm very efficient, I have to say. That's the <laughs> Polish way. Uh, that's the, the Polish way how we are. <laughs> no, that's great. I think um, it's given people loads of information. We've had lots of people commenting, yes, yes, please, when you mentioned um, to send the slides over to them. So, yeah, plenty to kind of get going on, but also to have a look back at once we're, once we're done and sort of have a, a think about and distill. So that's, yeah, a great offer. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we have had some questions pop up. Um, I just wanted to start, actually, because I know you mentioned... Um, in quite uh, a bit of depth about cancellation and no-show policy. Um, but have you adapted yours since reopening? Because I know that some salon owners have been a bit worried about um, no-shows related to COVID. So I suppose, obviously, if, if a client thinks they have symptoms of COVID, you absolutely want them to, to cancel their appointment. But I know some salon owners have struggled with clients saying, mm, I've got a bit of a sniffle, so I better not come in. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult um, kind of landscape to manage. Do you, have you changed your policy at all? Or do you have any advice on that? Okay, uh, sure. So I think uh, we have today Mondays. I think on Thursday or Friday, we have a, a webinar, a professional webinar. That somebody's talking about uh, cancellations. Yes. So I'm sure yeah. they're going to tell you a lot. But I will tell you about me, uh, since you ask. So yes. Uh, you have to be very careful with those, okay, because this is an unusual situation and you will have genuine people having symptoms or sometimes they will be just anxious, they will have few symptoms and you don't want to add it a stress, you don't want to be on this, taking money from people and upsetting them. Mm -hmm. I would say to you have that one off exception. So you know, but as I said earlier, take the money up front, so explain them, is it okay, uh, understand that's fine with us do charge them the 100% or whatever you charge, 
to secure that slot because you don't want them just to don't come back. Once you take the money for that, they have an obligation to come back to you. They will feel like obligated because you gave, you, you gave them a chance to come back. So at least you will just you lose one slot, okay? And then they will come back, but they will always look at you as, oh, you know, you've been really good because you gave us the chance. Be careful also when you, uh, when you make those decisions because your staff is also watching you and they're watching, you know, your human side as well. <laughs> you know, you're making business decisions, but they're also looking from other perspective of, you know, how do you treat this? Uh, and you really don't want to put your staff in danger. If a client is saying, sending email or saying that they have symptoms and then you force them to come, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and they, your staff see that you might get yourself in trouble. But with the cancellation, as I said, we have been, I haven't really had many, to be honest. I'm in London and with, we are in the area with, I think, medium rates, right? Um, we haven't had many, but mm -hmm. I will not, uh, I will, yeah, I will give them one of an exception in that situation. Excellent. That sounds like a really good, uh, good compromising policy, because as you say, you absolutely don't want to take any risks. But at the same time, you need to, to be careful that those few clients that, that may kind of not be genuine, you know, you're, you're weeding those out. Mm -hmm. Better to lose, you know, yeah, there might be some not genuine clients, as you said, there might be. But imagine if you, uh, if you kind of have trouble with them and they go online and they started to write mm -hmm. They had COVID and, and you did this, you did that. Uh, you, you absolutely don't want this in the current climate. Absolutely. And as we were going along, we had a couple of questions about some things you were talking about earlier. And um, someone over on Facebook has asked about, you mentioned online booking systems. Are there any that you recommend or can you tell us which one you use? Mm -hmm. uh, of course I can, yes. I've, when I opened my business I, eight years ago, working specialist, I started with Forest. Uh, there are many, many new ones now, which, um, you know, you can shop around. Um, few reasons why I started with them. Uh, they actually met me in person. So I had a meeting one to one. Uh, I also had £1,000 off because it was Olympics 2012. And they gave me a nice uh, chunk out. That was really good. I think they were very generous. Uh, Forest now grew and the prices are, you know, they, they went up over years. But I feel... Um, online system was something that uh, I remember going to um, a bank manager to ask for a loan for business and I asked for you know the business plan and he looked like how much money I was spending for for online booking system which was a big chunk I think it was about 40 percent of the money uh, but I said this is what's going to secure my business I know this is going to work I absolutely need this system I absolutely need online bookings so it's an investment that it's going to really um help you to succeed you know COVID now showed us that uh, you know we were closed down all you had to do is go online and send emails to all your clients easy to communicate so yeah I'm with Forest um, very happy with them I love it the, the the fact that I can call them and they have support line so yeah. you know sometimes clients calls you and says I've been trying to book this doesn't work this doesn't work you call Forest and they can actually track it down exactly what the clients was uh, pressing on. Okay, oh, excellent. So you have a very, very technical support. There isn't any like, oh, we don't know, or oh, tell them to do it again. No, they actually uh, let you know. But I would say try different companies. Don't look at the prices, okay? I think uh, sometimes people just go for, oh, what's cheapest? No, speak to people and see how you feel about their services, you know? if you can get on with them because you're going to be working with them almost every day. Absolutely. Yeah. It's got to be the customer service has got to be good. Absolutely. And another question we have had put through is um, if you have a client, so I think this, if you're working in a spa that also has um, kind of steam and heat treatments. So if the client has a Moroccan bar, so I suppose a ham or steam room treatment, would you do a wax treatment after that rather than before? Um, do you know what I would, I would avoid it because who wants to have a waxing after relaxing treatment? <laughs> First of all, um, well, no, you absolutely wouldn't do beforehand. Uh, I would wait a bit. I wouldn't do straight away because you know the the pore of your skins are open. Yeah, you can say that this will be easier to wax, but I feel like overall the temperature of the skin will be a bit of raised, and I think uh, you might get some reactions. You might get some irritation. So uh, I would wait at least twenty four hours. Excellent. Thank you. 
Um, another question we've had here in Zoom is um, from Raffaella, who said laser hair removal is very is a very good deal at the moment. There's lots of deals. Do you think that this is making waxing less popular at the moment? Is it is it tougher? Um, she said, I feel I've lost a lot of clients because of laser hair removal. But on the other side, it's very expensive to invest in a laser machine. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, I suppose. How, how do you deal with that? And, and kind okay. of Raffaella, absolutely. Thank you so much for this question, because I absolutely love it. I'll tell you why. Uh, I know people think like waxer and, and laser um, practitioner, they're not really friends because we're stealing clients from each other and once somebody goes for laser, that's it, they're gone. Well, I disagree with that. The reason why I went a train with laser was because I wanted to be able to advise my clients when I cannot do waxing for them anymore. As a professional, you have obligation to say no when you think that you can't really help that person, uh, you know, they're not going to get results. They, you might have a client that have POS, you know, that, that would be very good for you to recommend them to do the laser. So uh, you might say, well, Marta, yes, you have a waxing salon and you recommend a laser treatment. Yes, I do. Because I tell you from my practice, whenever I honestly explain the clients why I think they should have a laser, not only they appreciate it, they went and had it done it. Uh, that doesn't mean they completely left me because they might be waxing other body parts. So, you know, they might just go for underarm laser, but they might still be doing the eyebrow sleep and stuff. They become more loyal to you and they will recommend you to five other people. So guys, change a bit the, the attitude towards laser. Uh, it's amazing, like uh, if I have somebody who comes for waxing and they said, well, I had the laser, uh, it didn't work. And I started, because I have the knowledge, I started to talk to them about it, how many sessions they had, how does it work? You know, I tell them you can only get 80% uh, hair reduction. And they look at me and thinking, wow, she has the knowledge. So mm, if you want to be a top, top waxer, uh, I think you, also have to know a lot about laser and when is uh when is your duty to say to the clients look um i don't think we're going to get any more results uh some clients had uh you know they come to us from other salons they have lots and lots of ingrow hairs <coughs> excuse me and you know you can't treat them you can put them on products but overall i think you know if this is repeating you just uh you have to tell them what's next and it's amazing what happens when you do that. People mm. then recommend you for waxing to others because, well, you're honest and you don't just want to take the money, you're a professional. So laser, uh, I don't think it's going to kill the waxing because laser is still uh, a bit of higher price. Um, not, only, not everyone can have laser. Remember there are contraindications to laser, right? Um, quite a lot of them actually. Uh, no, it's not going to work on everyone and it's only for the darker uh, type of hair. So guys, no, laser is not going to kill waxing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friends with laser practitioners, they're very helpful. It's not for everyone, is it? That's the thing. People, people are different, clients want different things and some people are terrified of laser as well and some people yeah. are. And some clients, you know what, if, if you tell them about laser, they get uh, upset because they say, so I'm not going to be able to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing guarantees you, uh, you know, that you have that relation for at least a few years, right? Laser, it's six to eight treatments and that's it. So some clients don't like that idea. Excellent. Um, another question we've had through is um, about promotion, I guess. So it, uh, the question is, in the winter, people slow down on their waxing. What do you do? So I, pay, I suppose, yes, you're going to have fewer appointments coming in than in summer. What kind of things do you do to, to keep business going? Uh huh. So you see, I'm a waxing salon, so we don't have a, such a thing like slow down in the winter, okay? Because clients have to wax every five weeks, okay? If they want to have results, I don't understand why they should be slowing down during the summer. It is your job when they come to you first time during consultation to explain them what they need to do to get results. If you don't really tell them every single treatment, well, we need to book you in five weeks time because otherwise there won't be no space for you. you I need to book you now or, or book online. And that guarantees you not having, um, not having gaps in the winter time. There's absolutely no reason. People waxing throughout the winter. If you are not waxing salon, if you haven't built up your clientele yet, okay, you can do some packages, promotions for a winter, but I'm, I'm more like, mm, do it the other way. Do, make your clientele um, loyal to you and, and educate them. 
you can make a packages. You know, some clients could be a bit of lazy during the winter. That's true. They're like, I'm not showing my legs. I'm not going to the gym. I've just split up with my boyfriend. I'm not waxing. <laughs> we get them, right? Well, you know what? I, we're trying to encourage them to buy a block of waxing treatments. Not only, you can give them, for example, six for five. Six treatments for the price of five. And then they have that, it sits there. And what that makes them, they have those treatments paid, so they have to worry about it. It makes them more regular. If you have a client that is a bit, you're not sure they're gonna come back during winter, try, encourage them to go on a package. People love it because then they can, during the winter, and, and build up towards Christmas. It's amazing. People love it when they come at Christmas time and it's already paid. They're like, oh, it feels like a Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's your job, first of all. Educate them how often they have to come to get uh, results. Encourage them to book before they leave um, your salon or send them email reminders when they need to get a treatment. And three, try to encourage them to uh, get packages. Makes sense. So yeah, get that loyalty going right from the, the yeah. beginning. Excellent. Um, another question we've had over on Facebook is about, um, again, about the kind of cancellation and no-show policy. Someone has asked, should we charge 50% when making the appointment and then rebook the appointment if they cancel? So I suppose it's just, yeah, just about um, percentages and what you would recommend taking up front. So as I said in the presentation, some people do take 50% before and they keep it if somebody doesn't come back. That's an option as well. You know, my the way how I did it, it works for me, but it might not work for you. You know, depends on where you are and how much you charge. You know, we charge 50 pounds for a Hollywood. It's quite lots of money, right? But we live in London in and we well, we are in London, so it's a busy area, so we have a lot of people coming in. Um, and I guess the 50 pounds, you know, people can afford it a bit more. If you're in a smaller salon and you're a bit worried oh I'm gonna take you know 35 pounds or 40 pounds that's a lot uh, yeah 50 percent that'd be option the idea is not to just like get money from people the idea is to educate your customers to train them to the level that they are uh, cancelling beforehand they are sending you email and telling you what's happening and they have that culture of okay you know Martha is very strict on her cancellation I need to make sure I changed my appointment and but it, it works with our salon it, it took a few months just to, for people to get used to uh, and that's why give a one off you know one of an exception be mm -hmm. show that human side but then tell them you know this is a one off and next time we won't be able to do it yeah. there are situations where people get really angry about it so yes i'm not going to say to you it's all pink and roses it, it sometimes you will get a client who absolutely doesn't want to pay absolutely doesn't want to be charged and says this is ridiculous and stuff that happens and i tell you what you can only do as much as you can you can be nice you can try to accommodate them but at some point it's also okay to say look i would love to be treating you in our salons but this is our terms and condition and because you don't agree to them i think it would be best if you found a salon that can accommodate you better because we work here by appointments and we need to cancel within 24 hours. And that's okay to let them go. Uh, because you will then, you know, have another clients coming in who absolutely respect your policy. And, uh, you know, I've had a situation once where I've, um, when I've suspended somebody's account for, for six months for that, uh, it was constant uh, lateness, no shows and cancellations. And you know what, uh, she came back after six months. Of course, I've explained her why. And she knew she was just not really organized. And she's, she now comes and she's fantastic. <laughs> so you can, you can train your clients. Train your clients, that's great. That's why, that's, that's why you need that assertiveness skills as well mm -hmm. as a business owner, guys. That's what I was telling you in the presentation. If you are not assertive person, if you worry about this situation, that gives you anxiety. Invest in training. Yeah. And um, actually, somebody that was the last question someone did ask, actually, is do you have any recommendations on training courses? Because you, you said um, to kind of keep your business training up and, and management and everything else. Are there any sort of people that you work with or any courses you recommend? Mm -hmm. So I've uh, been having, uh, you know, trainings and courses across people from across the industry. Um, I have worked with Lisa McKeon. I'm currently working with Susan Rotledge. There are amazing um, mentors out there that you can reach out um, and you can, uh, you know, 
send them requests and say, what is your problem with? Uh, I've done a lot of um, courses outside as well. So they don't have to be from beauty industry. I've done assertiveness course. I've done management course. Uh, digital marketing I've done just to be a bit better online. Um, courses uh, about, you know, how to, I've done a course how to do live videos last year uh, because I was just so stiff and I was really, I can't watch them back now. Uh, so not you can within the beauty industry yes look for uh, coaches um just it's important that you also click with them mm, have yes. a conversation because you you're gonna be working with them closely i think it's up is is an investment that pays back uh, again and again i wouldn't be able to reach the next level with my business and personally if i didn't invest in that you can't you know, you have to put something in a pot to be able to take it out. So, um, yes, uh, th these are the people that I recommend. Um, there are lots of groups. I also have my uh, professional group. I help people with waxing, with any issues, whoever has a problem, you can write it there. And we all are trying to help as much as we can. Uh, so, yeah, if you need help with waxing, I can help. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, I think we are pretty much out of time, Malta, but yeah, there's tons of questions coming through. Thank, so thank you so much. And um, yeah, as I said, lots of people clicking yes, please, to uh, to get the slides sent through. So we'll definitely get those over to, to anyone that said that. Um, but yeah, Malta, thank you so much. It was really, obviously, really popular session and tons of great info. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And I hope to see you again, guys. And happy waxing. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we've got two more webinars this week, so do have a look over on professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars for the lineup and to register for those, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.